Strawberry lips shining in the summer sun. Canary tips glowing there for everyone. You fell asleep under the. I'm all like, oh my gosh, that's exactly the perfect sewing that I was wanted. So that's how you don't get the personalized thing in the stores or anything because we chose to go with KYM instead of KIM. <laughs> Then Emiko came from, um, we knew we kind of wanted to give her a Japanese middle name. So Ellen and I bought a book and it was all these names of girls' names and what they meant. So every night we were like reading to see um, how you pronounce it and what it meant. And Emiko was what we landed on, beautiful girl. <laughs> so, but that was, that was quite fun trying to figure out your name. <laughs> On my card is going into labor. So Ellen had this conception that labor takes anywhere from eight to like ten days. <laughs> but actually, people have been telling him that going into labor takes quite a while. So I kind of remember on January 27th, getting up at 4 a.m. and trying to wake up Alan and telling him my water broke. <laughs> so Alan gets up and he goes. Oh, okay, go back to bed, honey. <laughs> so he, not that he was trying to be mean, but he was just trying to say, you know, this is going to be a long process. Don't panic. Let's take our time. So naturally, I went back to bed. <laughs> we got up, took our time, took the shower, packed up, and we finally showed up at the doctor's office about 7 o'clock, and they said, okay, we're getting your room prepared. Um, we went in there, kind of got settled, it's about 8 o'clock, and we, I was going to heavy contractions at that time, and Alan's going like, slow down, this is going to be a long time, breathe in, <laughs> you know, all those Lamont stuff. And so we finally, um, I couldn't take it anymore, and I wanted that shot to your spine. I thought, I think I'm ready for that. So the doctor comes in to give me a shot, and he was just right about to put the needle on my back, when the nurse said, stop, the baby's coming out. <laughs> so she actually came out like within a minute after that. One push didn't come out, the second push, wow, she was quick, she was out. <laughs> and and Alan's first words, I think, is, look at all that hair. <laughs> so, so she was born at 8.34 a.m. that day. That was pretty cool. So Kitty's born in my days, you know, we didn't really have this um, medical leave for six months that most kids get now, or I call them kids, but young couples get now. I had to basically go back to work six weeks after. It was kind of really hard to leave um, Kimmy with someone, but we did find someone who was very caring and was very responsible, so it made it easier. But Ellen's been really a good lifetime coach for me, coaching me through all my career, <laughs> and saying like, don't worry, they will never remember this, they will meet you when they're older, They'll, they won't remember that you're dropping them off at 16. <laughs> So he said they will need you when they're in middle school and high school and taking them to places and just being there. So I said, okay, you know, got on to the careers and so forth. Um, and, you know, that was difficult having two careers. And I'm, I'm sure everyone can speak. It's the drop off to the babysitter. And our babysitter, we had a contract that. You know, after 4.30, it's $5 a minute after that. So Ellen and I are constantly calling us each other every day saying like, do you have a meeting? Because I have a meeting till 5 o'clock and you pick her up kind of a thing. So that was quite difficult, but as you can see, we, we kind of made it through and, you know, because she's here. <laughs> so I wanted, I was telling Michelle this card should have said stubborn Kimmy, but I put, I was trying to be, um, positive and I put independent Kimmy. <laughs> so when Kimmy was young, oh my gosh, I think we bought heads more when she was like three or four and mom could probably call it. Even the socks that she wears, she did not want those little things at the end. She wouldn't put her shoes on if the socks had all those little um, 
where, where it seemed at the end. So trying to get her ready in the morning was really quite <laughs> a challenge. And and um, I remember Alan kept trying to tell me, give her some space. And I'm thinking, a five-year-old, how much space can a five-year-old? But now I, I truly understand what you were saying. Alan has always been able to relate to Kimmy, and they do kind of have the same personality and so forth. So he was basically saying, Kimmy's very independent. You don't have to tell her she needs to be independent and give her some time and so forth. So, so I think as rough as we had kind of like growing up when she became a teenager, it was totally the opposite. I was so scared that when she became a teenager, I would have all this white hair <laughs> and like worrying and fighting with her. And I read all these books about teenage problems and so forth, but I never put them to use because for some reason Kimmy had turned around and I never really had any issues with her. She's like, you know, very respectful and um, knows, I mean, like I said, she, I don't want to say stubborn, she's very independent, she knows she can't change her mind once she decides on something, she's going forward with it. So, Ellen and I have kind of learned to, once she made a decision, we kind of step aside and know that she'll do the right thing and make the right decision. And she does, she, she um, puts everything in perspective and she always thinks about you know how her action would affect someone else or what how what she would say would affect someone else so I, I kind of admire you for that so thank you for being the person you are um, but really growing up you know uh, we, we kind of tried to find an activity for Kimmy we tried soccer we tried tennis even softball Kimmy played soccer for five years, but I can remember when she was five, she was one of those kids at the end of the field who was like playing, but she was picking flowers <laughs> at the field. And I as a mom, sometimes she was like the goalie. I as a mom was having a heart attack because the thing was coming, the ball was coming towards her. I'm going, Kitty, it's coming to you. You need to block the goalie. But she would get up and kind of wipe her hands. She said, as in front of the goalie and just stop the ball and kick it over and then she goes back to picking the ball. <laughs> so it was, it was quite interesting. But she, you know, sports just didn't work out for her and, and graduate, living, leaving elementary and going to middle school, she wanted to get involved in something so she wanted to kind of do the dance. She wanted to try out for the dance team and I'm sitting there as a parent, Kimmy, you haven't had dance classes since you were like four years old, <laughs> you know, you can't just step in there. But she said, Mom, just go to the meeting and, and let's see what happens. So I went to the meeting, I listened to the teachers, um, the, the dance coach who was putting the team together and I'm all like, yeah, this is not for her, you know, how she was describing what it takes. But right after her, the coach for Color Guard came up and spoke and she started talking about, I didn't know what Color Guard was, she was started talking about what Color Guard was all about and what kind of a person she was looking for. And I'm going, oh my gosh, that, she explained Kimmy, that is what Kimmy is. So I got kind of excited, I went home, I told her, you can still try out for the dance team, but you know, you might want to try out for the Color Guard. And since middle school, for the last seven years, that's been kind of her passion in life. And what a great ride it has been. I mean, not that she was dead, but her life just turned around since she found Color Guard. And as you can see, we have a team out here. I'm sure you guys feel the same way about Color Guard. Um, you know, uh, not that her grades were bad, but suddenly I see the 360 degree turnaround on her life studying a lot more, being more responsible. Um, for the last four years, getting up at 5.30 to be at zero period at 6.30 and then after school practice and weekend. So you can see that the love for for the sport. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat, but I, I don't know how much you guys know about color guard, but from a parent perspective, it's a four minute show. <laughs> so <laughs> four minutes. We're there three hours before the event and we're there till awards, so it's like really a whole day event to watch a four minute show. <laughs> so it's been quite fun though. I've, I've enjoyed watching all you girls.